Hi, everybody. I'm John Canary, and I want to share an exciting idea with you with regard to what we refer to as comfort zones. You know, just behind me here, you see in the wall on this whiteboard, you'll see two different people. As a matter of fact, we could put a lot more up there. And I found that the only difference in people is not so much in their, their education, their knowledge, their skill sets, their attitudes, their habits. What I found makes a difference in people is just the comfort zone that they find themselves in. You know, it's interesting that at the end of the comfort zone, I believe is where our life really begins. That's really where the fire and the magic really seem to connect, ignite, and take off. Like someone once said to me one time, I believe his name was Sandy Kennedy, but one of the best quotes, one of the best ideas I ever heard, don't stand by the fire asking for heat. Pile on the wood, the heat is going to come as a result. Well, that's something like the way that we should treat comfort zones. What is it that keeps a person like you that's watching this here particular, this here particular Skype program? What is it that keeps you in your comfort zone if you are in one? And we all have one. But what would you say is the major thing that keeps people in there? Well, before we get to that, what is the major that keeps people in the comfort zone? I believe it has something to do with maybe lack of knowledge. Could be something to do with the comfort zone you're in. Maybe it has something to do with the lack of skill. That you just need that little bit of knowledge, a little bit more skill, and you could make like great changes in your company, in your business, in what it is what it is you're doing. And then again, it could be relationships. You know, I think one of the greatest things that a person can do is find themselves in an environment to get into a place or a comfort zone with people that are already doing what you want to do and see what that brings. You know, one of my great mentors was Mr. Earl Nightingale. Mr. Nightingale said one time that all kinds of studies have been made regarding motivation. What is it, he said, that motivates people to do the things they do, achieve the things they achieve? And he said, well, there's no bad answer to so large and say complicated a question. We believe the overriding force, he said, that motivates people is due to their choice, to their choice of environment. Some people make that choice consciously, but a great majority make that choice unconsciously as a result of environmental conditioning. So you see, relationships have a big impact on what is called your environment, which means a big impact on your comfort zones. Well, let's look at that one thing that just seems to kind of trap people in a comfort zone that builds this imaginary wall, and it is imaginary, and it's that famous word that we're all familiar with. It's called fear. I think you know in your life, I think you know that most fear is something that the person themselves, you and I, we manufacture the fear. That's how we end up staying in the comfort zone thinking we're avoiding the fear when the fear is really, it, we're not avoiding the fear. The fear could be crippling us and we're not even aware of it. So I want you to give some thought to something. I want you to give some thought to a very powerful concept, simple as it may be, but it's not being done enough. And that simple concept is what I refer to as habits that make the difference in your life. You see, what is it that you need to do? Write it down on a sheet of paper. And then ask yourself this question, what do I have to do to achieve that? What is something I can do each and every day? In a sales position, for example, it could be prospecting. Like how many, time, how many prospecting attempts do you make each and every day? And then do it again tomorrow and the next day. And if you do it for 21 days, I promise you this, you will start to experience a little bit of light. And a little bit of light adds a whole lot more light. You begin to experience a change in feeling, the way that you feel. Now pay particular attention to what I'm going to say here. You take that feeling because feeling comes before thought. Now some people disagree with me on that. and I'm saying go ahead and do that. That's quite all right as long as you use what I'm going to say. So think about it. Feeling will take and facilitate the thought that it needs to complete itself. I want you to write that down. Feeling has a way of facilitating thought and taking that thought 
to complete that feeling that you have and what it is you want to do. So you have a feeling of what it is you want to do, but thought pops into your mind to tell you why you can't do it. Change that thought. Get the feeling to facilitate the thought that you need to complete the feeling, and I promise you that completion will be a new habit that takes place in your life. So that's one of the things, a prospecting habit. Another one would be, what would be a good income habit? Think about that for a moment. Would a big income habit be prospecting? Yes, what else would it be? It would be developing the best relationship you can with the people that you're actually prospecting with. Like the greatest gift that you have, two of them actually. One is the choices that you make in your life. And number two is the action that you take consistent with that choice. And if you do, you take whatever idea, whatever habit you want to form. And if you can make the choice every day, act on that choice every day, in 21 days, you're going to feel a breakthrough. You're going to feel a sense of ease. Things get a little easier, a little easier to do. Like, you know, uh, I'm going out here today after I do a little program here, and I'm going to go for a little a little run. Then I got to come back and do uh, and do some coaching and, and, and uh, some webinars and things of that nature. I only have to do those things until I really want to do those things. And then I don't have to do those things anymore because they become a part of me of what I do each and every day. So you think about it. You only have to prospect every day. You only have to work on developing relationships every day until you want to do those things. And I'm saying that period of time, maybe 21 days. And at the end of that 21 days, you're going to have a sense of like ease that starts to operate in your life. It's not as difficult as when you started out. And before long, it's going to produce a reaction, which we all know takes shape in terms of our results. So this John Canary, just urging you to try a couple of these ideas and see what it's going to do for you just at the end of a 21-day period. Have a good day.